Well, thank you very much. Uh, sometimes uh, legal prohibition of an activity is morally desirable, even though that activity may be morally acceptable in some circumstances. I think we've uh, had plenty of examples of why in some circumstances it might be morally acceptable, but our argument is that legal prohibition of selling one's organs is just such a case. It shouldn't be accepted, even though there are some examples where it would be. Now, the proposers have argued forcefully, in summary, if I may, that legalising sales of one's organs will fulfil the utilitarian objective of maximising welfare. The, the, we, we've had a good uh, run on that. Uh, while also, and not quite as much uh, enthusiasm for this as I was expecting uh, from all of them, but uh, some of your proposers uh, were arguing that, uh, that it will uh, basically respect the contemporary concern for respecting people's autonomy. Our opposing view has been that first legalising the sale of body parts will not maximise welfare, despite the uh, passionate uh, advocacy of uh, the last speaker. Uh, on the contrary, we argue that more harm than good will come of it. And second, that while respecting people's autonomy is generally a good thing, it isn't and shouldn't be regarded as a moral trump card. I'm an enormous enthusiast for respect for autonomy. I've called it first among equals in the context of medical ethics, but among equals qualifies first. And sometimes respect for autonomy must give way to other moral concerns, just as a prime minister must give way to his cabinet colleagues from time to time. We argue that uh, this is just one of those times. In the context of transplantation, the most obvious example of justifiably overriding autonomy is the legal prohibition on living donors selling their own hearts while they're still alive, at least for the time being. We can imagine cases, and indeed we've had some indication of those cases, where it might be morally justifiable. A devoted but poor parent raising funds to save the life of a sick child, for example. And we've had examples, not quite so dramatic, uh, along the same lines. Nonetheless, I guess that there are only a very few fanatically libertarian anti-paternalists here tonight who would wish to legalise suicidal selling of organs. A similar, though less dramatic, paternalistic concern requires people to wear motorcycle helmets. Our law protects people here whether they like it or not. Of course, the law also is based on a further moral concern, namely to avoid wasting taxpayers' money on NHS treatment of unnecessary head injuries. I'll come back to that in a minute. But they're just a couple of examples of why it's sometimes justifiable to override respect for autonomy. There are other, of course. Gun laws are another obvious example. In this country, though not, of course, in the USA, we legally override people's autonomy. Their God-given right to buy a gun whenever they want to by requiring them to obtain a gun license. Why? To protect others from harm. Similarly, we legally forbid people from driving on the roads uh, without a minder unless they've passed a driving test. Preventing harm to self and harm to others can sometimes justify overriding respect for individual autonomy. Another moral concern which you've heard about is justice and fairness, and that too can override respect for autonomy. I've mentioned the opportunity cost argument in the context of motorcycle helmets. Well, another justice and fairness argument which we've heard explains why in the NHS rich people cannot, however autonomously, buy their way to the top of the transplant queue. Why not? Because it would be unfair, unjust. So even if the utilitarian argument of the proposers were valid... If I am indeed living in extreme poverty and I believe that one million dollars can save my six children from starving and death, what makes you and what gives you the authority to deny the right to make this choice? I think I've just answered that question, but I'll try and do it again that sometimes, even though in individual cases it may be justifiable, nonetheless the, the resulting overall effects would be dangerous, uh, harmful, and therefore it's justifiable to prevent you. That's my response. You may not agree, but uh, this is the argument that we have been offering. So even if the utilitarian arguments of the proposers were valid, uh, those competing moral concerns 
uh, harm to self, harm to others, and justice would nonetheless justify the legal prohibition of sale of organs. But we've also argued that legalising organ sales, far from maximising welfare, would actually cause more harm than good. More harm to the recipients, more harm to the donors, and more harm to society overall. As you heard, organs are sold, that are sold are more likely to be damaged in one way or another, and especially to be infected with nasty and not necessarily detectable viruses. Furthermore, if organs are sold, there's likely to be a reduction in donated organs as potential donors are put off at the thought that their genuine generosity will be mistaken for money-grabbing commercialism. Thus, the quality and safety of the organs to be transplanted is likely to go down. What about the donors, or rather the sellers, as we should probably call them? Here we focus on live organ sales. As we've heard, there's a definite risk to the organ provider's health and even to his or her life. Yes, healthy donors can usually do without a kidney, at least for the time being. We don't know for how long that will be the case. Uh, they can do without a chunk of their liver, just as they can do without some of their blood. But even a few of the healthy organ donors will suffer ill health as a result, and a very few of them will actually die as a result, either from the anaesthetic or the surgery required for their organs to be removed. More importantly, the organ sellers are likely to be found in poor and malnourished populations whose baseline health is therefore more likely to be poor and whose risks from such surgery are therefore likely to be higher. Sorry, I've timed this and I want to stay in time, so forgive me. Moreover, in many poor parts of the world from which a large proportion of the paid providers of organs are likely to come, health services to deal with the ill health resulting from their surgery are unlikely to be free. And finally, the poor in many parts of the world are likely to be at greater risk of coercion and undue pressure to sell their organs, and at risk of gross exploitation by commercial middlemen, both in terms of the payment they receive for their organs and the care that they're subsequently entitled to. And as you've heard, the inequality gap between the rich and the poor can be predicted to increase as a result of legalizing the sale of organs. So no, society's welfare won't be maximised uh, by legalising the sale of organs, it'll actually be diminished. But we entirely agree uh, that better structures for providing organs, for volunteering to provide organs are necessary. And uh, some of us at any rate will say that we also ought to go towards um, the assumption, uh, the Spanish way or the Welsh way now, uh, the assumption that organs should be considered to be donated unless people have actually argued against. Though I would add a little plea here for um, some, uh, some um, kindness uh, and compassion on the part of uh, the Welsh, so that if uh, the relatives find themselves really agonised by the prospect of this donation, then that should be accepted. So, uh, no to the sale of organs, but yes to a presumption, A, that uh, people, unless they've otherwise said so, should be assumed to prefer that after they die, their useful organs will be given to live people who can benefit, rather than given to the worms or the flames. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to vote against this motion.